Welcome to episode 46 of Prof and Dev Play Games. I am the Professor Larry, and over there is my friend Anthony. The developer. And we are here to bring you some impressions from No Man's Sky, talk about some news about uh, the PlayStation, and a little bit of news about Final Fantasy, perhaps, and some Steam, Quantum Break, Microsoft news. Um, and we're going to talk about some games that we're playing. Uh, and we're going to cap it all off by having an off-topic discussion about Renaissance Fairs. But we are going to start with No Man's Sky impressions. Anthony has been playing this game all week. He's, yep, he hasn't gone, to, hasn't gone to work at all, hasn't seen his children, hasn't eaten, hasn't slept, just has played this game. That's not true. Oh, okay. Um, but it was a good story. Uh, it was so, a good story. <laughs> so what do you think? I'm too old for that crap now. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, totally. <laughs> uh, um. I'm having a good time with it. Um, of course, anyone probably listening to this has probably read... I don't think you can read any game news site without seeing tons of stories about No Man's Sky right now. Positive, negative, honestly, mix of both. Yep. Uh, some news sites doing their, their usual, let's uh, put an article up about it every day. We hate the game, but we're still just going to write stories about it. We like the clicks and the traffic. Pretty much. Uh, I saw this with Destiny. Originally oh, yeah. came out too. And I'm like, you hate this thing, yet you don't stop writing about it. Oh, because it, people people want to read nothing but it. So, okay. Um, so, my impressions, I've been... I have lost hours to this game just... Like, look at my clock. It's 8.30. Look, next time I look at my clock, it's midnight. Oh, wow. That's a good thing. It is. I'm having a... I'm having the right... It is what I wanted out of the game. Um, and you didn't look around and see that your house was burned down. Like, everything else no, was fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> okay. Everything's fine. Uh, we're just... Playing it, there's definitely... It is probably the only game I've played that gives me a constant sense of... Uh, of wonder almost all the time. You never know what's over the next hill. You never know what's planet you're going to find, and it's just presenting you with just you're just like, okay, this is a beautiful shot, or oh, that's a weird thing. I wouldn't have expected to see that, or weird creatures. You have no clue what this game's going to throw at you. And on that part, I'm loving it and just going going to town. Um, now, when you talk about the actual game. It's pretty shallow, honestly. Mm -hmm. They have this technology where they built this engine, and they've clearly that's been a success. It's doing what it's supposed to do, but there is a huge game attached to it. Get to the center of the galaxy. I mean, you learn the story is light, but there's a lot of. I've been playing. I'm picking up clues. There's different alien races, and they all have histories. Very well thought out histories, clearly. But you don't fully know it. You just kind of start picking it up on it from a sentence here, sentence there, different monoliths, and you're like, oh, I'm starting to learn about these races and the conflicts they've had with themselves and with each other. Learning about what the Atlas is, which is the pyramid that you mm -hmm. always see on the right. cover and stuff, and like learning what their role in the whole world is. So... From that standpoint, like there is story there. It's just freeform, honestly. You discover it as you play. And I'm sure some people will never understand any of it and just ignore it completely. Right. And it won't matter. So I don't know. Um, you asked for my impressions earlier in the week if I'd recommend it for you. No, it's lonely. Yeah. It's a very lonely game. It pushes that feeling of you are a tiny speck that means nothing in the grand universe. I like I like being thought being pressed to think about like the philosophy of that, but I just you're right. I just uh, games where you're a lonely person by yourself and having no interaction with anyone else. Just the, I don't find myself coming back to those games, so I would yeah. probably play it for a little bit and never come back to it. And this is a weird thing with this game because there's definitely at times I'm playing and I'm like, okay, I'm just kind of doing the same stuff. Am I going to get? bored of this i'm like thinking i'm like in my head of am i really enjoying this how much am i enjoying this except the next day all i want to do is play the game 
I just want to keep exploring. I want to keep doing it. And I've been waiting for that to kind of just wear off. Mm -hmm. But there's always something more. I'm like, oh, I could go back. I could do this or that. I think I think it's cool that you actually you went into this game saying that like I want an exploratory experience and I don't know if you had much else that you wanted out of the game besides that. Not really. I mean, it, it's delivering on that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, some people I know are complaining because it has the survival aspect to it. Right. But I figured it was going to have something like that. Like that's there's definitely. I think after my my second day, I accidentally stranded myself on a planet where I landed ran out of fuel i didn't have fuel to 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 uh launch again Mm -hmm. take off so i'm sitting there going crap well gonna have to run around get some plutonium refill my boosters so i can actually like get off this planet again and that that was probably about an hour of me just wandering around trying to find stuff and most planets have the all planets have the resources you need it's just you have to go find them um, and that loop of kind of collecting resources uh, is not bored, boring for you yet? It hasn't got really boring for me. Uh, it's tedious at the beginning because mm-hmm. you have really small inventory space. Right. I don't have small inventory space anymore. Like I have 40 slots on my character and 30 on my ship. So it, I rarely have issues with inventory space anymore. So... It's uh, been a uh, that that's alleviated a lot of the tedium. Uh huh. So it's opened me up to be more focused on like, okay, what do I want to in this grand universe beyond just exploring? What do I want to do? Okay, I'm going to go down to this planet that has. Let's explore. Oh, it has this really rare resource. I'm going to mine the crap out of this and go back and sell all of it and mm-hmm. make a bunch of money to get a better ship or, um, buy better multi tools. Your your gun. You have one gun in the game that is used for mining and. Uh, shooting and scanning Mm -hmm. so and you can upgrade that or no yeah you can upgrade it so you can upgrade it to get more bigger number of slots and you can put upgrades in each of these slots so you Mm -hmm. can kind of custom customize them how you how you want it do you want it to be better at mining or shooting or Mm. add a grenade launcher to it Uh, (sighs) there's all sorts of random (laughs) stuff you can do to it um again the one thing this game doesn't do is hold your hand though right so you have to figure it out yourself. So much is figuring it out. Just like, all right, there's a lot of subtle mechanics that I didn't even pick up on originally, and it wasn't until reading something online going, oh, now that I know that, that changes how I approach like the multi-tool, how I upgrade it, and how you place upgrades next to each other. If they're like, if you put all your combat ones next to each other, mm-hmm. they get bonuses. Ah. If you put all your mining ones together, they get bonuses. So you kind of want to put group similar things together, and I think that works the same way in your starship as well, the upgrades. And some of the criticisms that I've heard of the game or, you know, read, I read a bunch of reviews, um, is that after a while, the algorithm to, you know, put together the planets or the the creatures, you just kind of see the same parts repeating. Like, they're put together in different orders, but, like, the you know, the colors swap or instead of a tail, you'll have, I don't know what, six legs or, but it's kind of samey every planet you go to. Yes. What do you think about that? So going along, playing it this week and going, yes, I do feel like there's part of that is samey. Like that's the thing you'll start saying. You're like, Oh, okay. I just went out. This is another rock planet similar to one I've seen before. Not exact similar but the game's still throwing new things at me. Mm-hmm. Like, of course, at the beginning, for the first couple of days, every planet I went to was new to me. Right. Now, today I was playing. I found... I only went to, I went to like, five different planets this morning when I was playing. And of those five, two of those planets were completely new to me. Like, just had things that I had never seen before. And yeah, uh, you've already put in how many hours into the game? I put in probably... 20 cool so you're still seeing new stuff after 20 hours oh yeah all right and i've been reading online that was another thing i found is like there's the color of star matters that you're jumping to Mm. so like yellow stars are the most basic and you'll see the most common like common uh basically rock floating in space planets 
but I think and I've started jump, being able to jump to red stars, which give you chance for like lush worlds, like more earth like worlds. Mm hmm. A smaller chance of that, and then there's green stars, and then like one other color, like the actual classifications of stars that astrologers use, astronomers use. Um, and I know that the you have to get different warp drives to be able to jump to those systems. And so I want to hit green because I've heard green gives you really like crazy strange worlds. That's cool. Uh, and this is the thing where people are saying like when it says like. Go- chart a path to the center of the universe is mm-hmm. one of the main goals right there's a it does give you that path but it actually for the most part chooses the most streamlined path is usually just through yellow stars and you're not going to see any kind of the so, chance of seeing really rare stuff isn't there unless you're actually like going off on your own beaten path and just being like i'm gonna go here what do i find so people who are playing this as a a to b game are missing out on the the variety of the game i think so mm-hmm and I would say that's probably a detriment to their design. Right. They should be. You can't go to yellow anything other than yellow stars until you upgrade your warp drive. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you do that, they should be start seeding in the path that takes you through red stars every once in a while. Then once you have the ability to go to green stars, do that, and so on and so on. Right. It, it would, I think, liven the experience up for people and keep because that's. I've just started jumping to random stars now, just being like, hey, there's a red one I can get to. Let's see what happens. And that that was today I ended... I played basically probably like four hours today. Just um, in one sitting? Yeah, for the most part. I got mm-hmm. up and you know fed my kids and did my... Well, thank God. <laughs> adult, adult responsibilities. Um, oh, my son just wanted me to keep playing. He was... He's in love with just watching me go to new places and find new things. Oh, yeah. Absolutely loves it. And he's not like, give me the controller I want to play. Just, he no, likes, he's he, content the, to watch. The, PS, the PS4 controller is still kind of a pain in the butt for him. Yeah. Like, he'll play uh, Lego Marvel. Right. But it's hard. Like, it's just, his hands just quite aren't quite big enough to hit all the buttons at once and mm-hmm. do what he wants to do. So he's like, nah, he'd much rather have me just play the game. And are you sprinting around with R3? Like pressing that stick in, yep. or oh, I don't. You, well, you don't have to. You just click it. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't bother you. No. Mm, okay. I got used to that pretty quickly. Yeah. I've just I been get, reading. I get that it's opposite nitpicks. of other games. Yeah. But and you that's, can. That's you, one of the weird ones that I'm like. Well, sure, it's opposite of other games. It doesn't mean that how the other games like is the right way to do it or not. Yeah. Like. They want it on L1, don't they? Um, for sprinting? Yeah. Usually it's L3. Like if That's they... what I mean, L3. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They want it, which I'm like, okay, I get, but L3, yeah. They're both one, uncomfortable either... to me. Yeah, either one, I'm just like, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Um, and you can use the disability um, yeah. features to remap that, but it remaps for the whole system, so every game yeah. you play would have that. Uh, I wish more games would just have remap just inside me, yeah me too and this game could i don't see why it wouldn't right maybe it will eventually we can, we can talk to all the piece about all the pc problems yeah but, yeah but the pc has remap controls you can uh, remap the controls to whatever the hell you want so you've been playing the ps4 because it yep. came out early yep. um and we've found out that there are a number of issues with no man's sky um drops crashes so i would say so a lot of people of course, when it came out, it was like, it's not working, it's not working. So, a lot of the people complaining are trying to play it on processors that are below minimum spec. Uh-huh. And you, there's a reason why they have a minimum spec on the processor. Uh, there's a certain generation of processor up on AMD and Intel that supports certain CPU instructions. Bef- any processor below that doesn't support these cpu instructions which are essential for the game (laughs) to run yeah okay so i mean sean murray like tweeted is like so a lot of the people performing support tickets he's like a majority you're trying to run the game on stuff that's below min spec min spec is there for for you it's very it's a very strict min spec in our case right Um, and people are same same with video cards as well like you have to have a video card that supports OpenGL 4.5 
and you need to be on the latest drivers for your video card. Latest. It cannot be, like, a revision or two old. It has to be the latest. Mm-hmm. Well, I should look into those things. I think eventually if I get it, I would get it on PC. Um, so I should make sure that I can play it. But I, I want to ask, so if you can't play it on a minimum specs, why are you complaining? Because they told you you couldn't, but I shouldn't ask that question. Because, because... most people don't even look at the minimum. They yeah. just are like, right. let's say you're on Steam. You're like, I want to buy this game. How many people actually look at the minimum spec? Steam doesn't tell you that you're below the minimum spec. Right. So you just buy it. And you're like, why did it crash? Well, sorry. Refund. Get yeah. a better computer. I mean, that's yeah. that's PC gaming. I completely right. understand that. But there are also legitimate other issues going on. Frame rate stuff that mm-hmm. they've mentioned. Um, which isn't shocking to me. At all, like I wanted it early, but I also worried. This the team that built this is less than fifteen people, right. ten people, something mm-hmm. like that. It's right. some ridiculously small number of people. They made their own engine for this, incredibly custom, weird engine that does incredibly crazy things. But they're also ten people. Most FPS teams, like AAA FPS teams, are fifty or more, maybe a hundred. Yeah. Well, it they matters. just, they're onboarding or they just onboarded, um, like a QA team that's dwarfs their team. Yeah. It's so, not shocking. Yeah. So I'm not surprised they have hardware compatibility issues. Like small team custom engines. This is like, they can't rely on unreal or unity. These other engine makers to be like, Oh yeah, we know our engine runs on all this stuff. Right. So like, Nope. Figure it out, like oh, so many variables. So there are so many variables. Yeah. So, I mean, Crazy. back at PopCap when we were a PC company, I sat next to the guy that was doing the hardware compatibility code mm. for the PopCap engine, and it was the most miserable experience I've ever seen out of. And it's just, it's not even. It's just trying to keep track of like, okay, here's a giant list of all the video cards you need to support. Well. Let's test on each one. Oh, look at this this video card under this driver reports itself as having X amount of memory. That's wrong. It actually only has Y amount of memory. So we need to code in a special exception for this one graphics card. Oh, my God. And you have to, like, test every single environment. Yes. yes. Oof. God, that would be miserable. It is miserable. <sighs> I have PC development sucks a lot sometimes yeah um, especially when you're doing your own engine right like you're not you have to rely on your resources to make sure it's working across everywhere and that's why you see a lot of indie games have compatibility issues right because it's not a it's not a simple problem it's just it's it's never fully solved is the issue mm-hmm. oh yeah because new it's drivers new, come out and... yep yep and then if your if your system works, but then you upgrade one of your components, and then it working with the other ones changes. Yep. Ugh. PC gaming. Yeah. Right. Um. But you get really pretty, better looking stuff usually. But. Yeah, Witcher have, three on that computer looks great. You have to fight with it. Uh, did you ever fix when it wouldn't would get the crappy frame rate? Or. Oh yeah. Um. Like, how long did you go fighting that before you were like, okay? It was, I think, three or four times where I loaded it up. And I, I figured out what it was. Um, I had GOG in the background. And GOG was, like, eating up, like, half my CPU for some reason. I don't know what but, was going on. But exactly. You're just like, yep. it works most of the time. Yeah. Why is it not working this time? Okay. Oh, when I started playing Mass Effect 3, like, I couldn't get origin to load up mass effect 3 i just kept yeah. looking for downloadable content and it was driving me nuts and then one day it just didn't do that anymore yeah so yeah so i mean that's i feel bad for anyone on the pc having issues with it um i've also seen it on two co-workers computers and they just downloaded it on friday off steam and it just worked and played for them Perfect. no so, crashes no right. errors they just were play go mm-hmm. so it's always hard to say how bad it really is. Um, well, yeah, I think that you have, I think with it, in any case, you have people who it's not working out for them, so they're really angry, so you hear yeah. a lot from them. 
but yeah, the people not... that the people that are actually playing aren't talking, they're <laughs> right? Because playing. they're playing. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's hard. To, it's really hard to say, like, what the ish, how many overall issues there are or are not. Right. Um, because I also know that yeah, tons of people aren't on the latest drivers. They're like, oh. And then you read people, they're like, oh, I have the latest drivers, I know it. And they do. And then they're like, oh, but my CPU is below this point. Mm-hmm. And that's just how it goes. Um, and they did say, the No Man's Sky team, Hello Games, have said that they're going to put a better... Instead of just, they're like, it shouldn't crash. We should throw an error that displays saying that your processor isn't... Uh, yeah, exactly. Is it good enough? Like, so you don't have to field those questions because the the game yeah. will tell you. <laughs> the game will tell you, like, sorry, dude, not not happening. Yeah, upgrade that CPU. Yeah. So, but overall, I'm still enjoying it. I will probably play it again once we're done recording, at nice. least for a little bit. Um, All right, then we're at episode over. Thanks everyone for listening. <laughs> yeah, I have just landed on a really cool planet that I want to explore. Well, I have a, a one really important question I haven't asked you yet about this game. Um, what's what? What have you been naming things? I actually haven't been naming things a ton; just letting it use defaults. Oh, really? Uh, I named a planet, a system, for my wife, son, and daughter. Nice. I named one for me, but then it's just PS4, and I don't really want to type out on the PS4 constantly. Uh, that's true. I mean, if I was on the PC, I'd be naming things left and right. <laughs> yeah. Um, every once in a while, I'll name something for someone or just do some random thing. But I kind of want to save it for things that I actually care about. Right. Or like, oh, that thing. So So I'll, I'll be expecting a Prof and Dev Play Games Planet. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of how I would do that. Uh, I wonder if it would let that happen. I thought it didn't allow, like, na- well... That's not true. No, it totally would. Yeah. Uh, you could get around, do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, Probably not dick face or something, though. Uh, I haven't seen anything like that, but I have seen... Have you seen other people's stuff? Um, no, I... Well, yes, I have, but not for in the game. The oh. loading screen flies oh, okay. you through space, uh-huh. and it's actually all real systems. That That's cool. People, and it shows you ones that people have discovered. Nice. Like, the names are below them, and... It's only a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction. Right. Maybe like less than one percent. <laughs> Damn. It's the game is enormous. Right. Like this that's the thing. The sense of scale in this game is just that's where you're like, I mean nothing in the universe. Right. Nothing. Right. That's one, kind of a cool feeling. <laughs> yes. It's a very existential kind of like, holy crap. Nothing matters. This is huge. <laughs> I played this game and I realized nothing matters. <laughs> Not really. Um, the, the scale is insane. Like if you just, without jump drive, just pointed yourself in space saying like, I'm going to go to that planet over there. It's like, okay, it'll take you like four hours to get there. Enjoy. And so you, could you just coast for four hours and watch? Uh-huh, if you wanted to. It would just, wow, blackness for four hours. You get pretty much, you see the planet, you see it out there. And you're just like, okay, I'm slowly getting closer to that thing. I'm pretty sure the best thing to come out of No Man's Sky is the subreddit No Man's High. <laughs> Have you seen this? It, no, but I've completely expected that from this game <laughs> from playing it. I'm like, this is totally the game that anyone that just wants to get high and just play a game, this is it. That's this it. This is the perfect game for you. Exactly. No Man's Sky and chill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that? It, it is. It's just... Um, and totally one of my coworkers is like, yep, that's totally what he's going to do. Yep. He's just going to sit there and he's just going to, he's just going to get baked and just sit there for hours just exploring the universe. That's what it seems like it was built for. Kind of. (sighs) Jeez. Well, thanks for your impressions of No Man's Sky. Any other thoughts before we move on to the news? I don't think so. I think if anyone's trying to pick it up, read about it first. Uh Uh-huh. Go in with certain expectations, uh, because you should know what the game is now. So, right. Read online if it sounds like it should be easy to know if it's a game that you would like or not. So, uh, I hope people end up enjoying it. I'm look look forward to what actually once they get done with all this, like putting out all the fires 
of right. launch. I'm mm-hmm. very interested to see when they start adding new content. And the base building and stuff. Yeah, base building would be amazing. It's like Minecraft in space at that point. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, it definitely gives me more of a per Like, all the resources I gather now just go for upgrades to ships or um, multi-tool or just sell it to make money to get better ships and things. But if it was the base building where I'm taking these resources to build a base, ideally, potentially with other people at some point. Right. Yeah, that would give the game a much... I think it needs that one other component uh, that will make it stand stand longer, have yeah. longer legs. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts next week. Yeah. See how you know, stick with it and see where, where your mind goes on this. Yeah. Um, so uh, stick with us, and we'll be back from the break to talk about some uh, rumors and some news. Stay right there. All right, my friends, welcome back from the break. We've got a couple of pieces of news for you. And the first one, I don't know if it's like a, a gut shot um, if you were looking forward to this game, but there's some rumors that Final Fantasy 15 is getting delayed two months. It's this terrifying. Is, a gaffe. is it yeah. is it terrifying? Kind of and kind of not. I'm actually like, oh, man, that gives me more time to actually like play other games. Yeah, that's true. Keep playing No Man's Sky. No um, Man's Sky, uh, Deus Ex. Oh, yeah, that's true. That comes out next week or week after? Two weeks, I think. Two weeks. Um, Two so weeks, I should mention this This was news from Neil Gaff, and it's basically a GameStop employee who posted um, the, uh, whatever it is, the standing advertisement for Final Fantasy XV, and they have the instructions for placing a sticker over the available 9 30 16, so that it says 11 29 16. Um, so it looks pretty looks like a pretty legit uh rumor here yeah I, the only thing with this is i'm like yeah games get delayed but i'm like man if you're gonna have a big press release press conference thing event to show the release date of your game you should hit that date oh yeah absolutely i <laughs> think that... you know when the game's coming at that point you should know i mean how many months ago did they when was that that was a couple months ago. Uh, Greg yeah. Miller and Tim Geddes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple months ago. Having... Not too long ago. Everyone at that point, team, everybody, should know exactly when their game's coming out. Uh, this shouldn't be a... There shouldn't be two extra months added, eight weeks added on. You're like, no, if it's going to be that time, you would have known that already. And you should, your team, just someone needs to own up and say, no, this is how long this is actually going to take to make. Well, and I guess we're all going to know tomorrow because part of the, the rumor is that they were told not to put up those stickers until uh, August, f- after today, after Sunday, August 14th. Yeah, so, so I assume a yeah, press release will be coming out if this is true. It might, um, be, not, might not be a rumor by the time this posts tomorrow morning, so yeah. It's um, just sad. It's yeah. Just like, oh, come on, guys. Well, on September 30th seemed like a good launch date because it kind of gets in front of all the other games, but now... The 30th of November is actually after Black Friday. So, yeah. I mean, as far as I understand it. Um, Pretty sure it is. Yeah. So oh, that's... 20, 29th. Let's see here. Dun, dun, dun. Um, 29th, yeah. It's the fall. It's the week. The Tuesday after uh, Black right. Friday. Right. Yep. Interesting choice of release date. Usually you want the big ones up before Black Friday, but yeah. I'm not a marketer, so whatever. But there's a lot to play. Like you said, there's oh, this year there's so much to play. We're not we're not hurting for games. But if you've been waiting for this game, how long is this has been? What ten years now? Yeah. So I love on the the GAF forum it says uh, when will it release and it has a bunch of options. And the final one is after Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Followed, so true. Second place is I can't take it anymore. Yeah, I just don't. At one point, I was just kind of... I read this rumor, and I was like, of course. I'm less sad or anything, or like upset about it, but just more, like I said, frustrated with the fact that they did their entire big press event mm-hmm. conference. <laughs> Going like, we're going to... And I really wish companies would stop doing that crap. If you don't know when it's coming out, don't do that. Right. Um, yeah. During that event, speaking of the event, 
remember when they posted the thing that says the release date and they put like a, a future date and they were like, just kidding, they rolled it back to September? Yeah. What was the date? Oh, I don't know. It's on the GAF form, if you go down to comment 46, it says that it shows November 30th, 2016, which is <laughs> really close to November 29th. It's true. So okay, that's funny. Yeah, that's, if that's true, that's funny. So, yeah. Someone there on the executive team was like, oh, we can, we can hit it early. Yeah. And then the actual team making the game is like, no, we can't. What are you right. talking about? Well, hopefully it means that it'll, you know, whatever they found will, will be better and yeah. it makes the game better. And once it's out, you won't care about the delay. So, yeah. And, and that's I, where it comes down. And that's what? Delaying it for, that's where it com- what it comes down to. Yeah. Delaying it is fine if you get a better game out of it. Right. And that's all I can hope. Hopefully they're just not delaying it and it's still just going to be released in a broken state. Well, I mean, like No Man's Sky was delayed and then it's out now and kind of forget about the delay. It's true. Actually, most people I hear are like, why don't you delay it longer? Yeah, right, to get the PC version working better. Yeah. Or to get more content into the game or something. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the Metacritic, I think, has settled on around 70%, which seems... That seems about right. Like a good good game, not great, but good. And for what it is, yeah, uh, people can find a lot of value in exploration. Yeah. And those who can't, find a different game. That's fine. There's lots to play. Square is not interested in a 7 out of 10 game. Uh, no. They do not want Final Fantasy 15 to come out and be mediocre. No. So, uh, we'll see. Maybe by tomorrow we'll know. Yep. Uh, next piece of news is about PlayStation, and I think the next two kind of fold into each other. Um, one of the hosts of uh, Kind of Funny Games, one of the co-founders, uh, let us know that he got an invitation to the September 7th PlayStation meeting, quote-unquote, in New York City at the PlayStation Theater. Um, so something's happening. They're showing, got to be showing something off. It's the Neo. Well, yeah, it feeds into the next uh, piece Let's just of be honest. News. Right. It's got to be, well, you don't think it's the next Vita? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry, PlayStation Neo was actually not another PlayStation. It, it was just a, it was a new Vita. <laughs> it's another Vita. <laughs> um, so from Vice with, uh, from Catrick. Patrick Klepek and Austin Walker, Sony to reveal upgraded PlayStation 4 in September. So it looks like that's what this is going to be about. Yeah. Do, you, do you think it comes out this year? I'm skeptical. Yeah. I mean, I would kind of feel like we would have heard rumors about production already. Like, I've heard rumors of the dev consoles mm-hmm. and that timeline, but I haven't actually heard of any, like, Rumors about like, hey, they're slowing down current PS4 development, not stopping it, but slowing it down and ramping up new, sourcing new materials and new components. Right. Um, haven't seen any really rumors on that, which usually you see some of that. You know, like, oh, uh, people in China leak. Yeah. Uh, factory workers leak. Like, hey, look what we're working on. Here, here's the the device code or things like that and really haven't seen any of that so i'm questioning i don't think they can get it out in time honestly yeah and it seems like they would put it out next fall and just head to head with scorpio yeah i mean maybe that's the thing maybe they originally were going to get it out this this year maybe and they saw that scorpio is going to be late yeah. later and right. they just be like all right we can take our time right my honest thought is actually they'll announce that it will be out in spring. Oh, really? I guess. Yeah. Oh, man, that would suck. Oh, it would, it would crush the NX. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. <laughs> uh, but but that, I don't, that is my thought Uh huh. based on it. Because if they're showing it now, I don't think they're going to wait a whole year. I well, think that, it's going to be like six months. Yeah, and that makes sense because it, it's not a, I mean, it is a new console, obviously, but it's not a PS5. It's, no. I, I don't think it is, at least. Um, yeah, wow. I hadn't thought about that. That would no, totally my, eat into people's wallets when they were thinking about getting an NX. Yeah, and then because uh, all the development rumors is that the final dev kit arrives to developers in September, and so that would give final developers of give them three to six ish. Like you want to give those developers a certain amount of time with the final hardware, the right. final dev kit. Um, but they have six months is about right. And they still they have prototypes of the 
Neo basically now. Yeah, so yeah, they have they have whatever revision right it is right now. Um, but yeah, they'll get final stuff, and then they either make their games run on the final hardware and start doing all the compatibility testing on that hardware. Um, because I, w- I wouldn't expect games. It seems we get the final hardware, and I would expect they would start trying to get certified within a couple months. Yeah, it'll probably take four. It'll probably take six to eight weeks once a team gets final hardware to get through all their own QA testing before they send it off to Sony Cert. So, right. Yeah, I think spring. Honestly. Okay, that's a a bold prediction, but uh, the more that you talk, the more it makes sense to me. I just don't think they're going to wait a whole year on it if they're going to talk about it in September. Well, yeah, and I don't think they can because then they're going to cannibalize their PS4 sales. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only other thing that can happen is we'll talk in September and it will be out in November. Which, uh, the the thing that speaks to the truth of that is that if they announce a super souped-up PS4 coming out, people are going to wait to buy a PS4 until it comes out, so just put it out as soon as possible so that you start exactly. getting sales. So that's possible. Yeah. Um, I would say that's currently in my head sitting around like a 40% chance with spring at like 60%. And does um, it have some tie into the VR? Because if yeah, it does, then the that VR makes sense. kind of is also a piece there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's maybe it will. Maybe it is coming out in November, but it's only going to be in small numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows? I, but that's my thought. They're not going to wait a year. It's going to either be right around the launch of time of VR, or they're going to hold till March, April, right. somewhere in there. Um. Do you see us getting anything else at the PlayStation meeting besides uh, Neo? Uh, probably some VR. Okay. Final kind of push to VR kind of, because, uh, I mean, that's out in a month after mm-hmm. that, two months, right. roughly. So, yeah, you, I would expect that they'll they'll show off some near close-to-done VR experiences. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you'll see any other... I don't think any other like big game announcements or anything. I think it's going to be focused on hardware. But I could be wrong. I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're going to announce some Vita hardware. Just just on the <laughs> off chance that I'm correct. <laughs> I don't think I really think that, but I'll put you. I'll put that as like a five percent chance. Yeah, maybe a little lower, but that'd be awesome. <laughs> I Vita, would. Vita. I'd be pretty happy if that happened. I mean. So like we're gonna compete with the NX by having a, a tablet that you can take out and then dock up with your PS whatever it is called four SK or four K or whatever. Yeah, I, I know they tried out the Vita, but we'll see. Yeah, but what they did with the Vita was more of a like throw Vita bone, uh, Vita owners a bone. They didn't. They've never really used it as a heavy marketing yeah. thing of like this is a big feature of these two things together. Right. So like. I feel like it's always been presented as like, well, if you have both, look what you can do. Right. That's true. If you happen to have both. I just, I feel like the decision to have proprietary memory just sunk that thing because it was yeah, so it expensive. Help. It did not help. Mm. There's a lot of things that didn't help that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We can't just pick one thing. <laughs> um, so you want to take the next piece of news? This is something that you sure. found. This is, yeah, this is a kind of an odd one to me. Um, this is from Polygon reported this. Quantum Break PC getting Steam and retail release. Damn. And it's now $40. Um, and it basically was, unbeknownst to most people, uh, it was a timed exclusive, yeah, which no, yeah. I had no clue. Right. No Microsoft one talked about didn't that. talked about that. So there you go. Um, for Quantum Break is totally going to be available outside of Microsoft's Microsoft land um, on PC at least it's probably never going to come off come to PS4 but, yeah. but yeah it was mostly a thing of like I wonder if it was timed exclusive or if it was did Remedy go back and say okay it's not selling well enough we want to make money let us renegotiate so we can release it this on to a wider audience right and does this have similar things to other games that are being made, like Recore? Like, are they timed? 
That's a good question. It's like it makes me like reevaluate any third, uh, third party exclusive games for Xbox and go like and Windows Store and be like, so are these actually exclusive or are they just timed for PC? Well, it feels like the Microsoft first party studios are blurring the lines between what's on Xbox and what's on PC. So why not third parties as well? Yeah. Um, first party though, I think is only going to be in the Windows Store. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not going to be on Steam. No, you're right. No. But they're letting third party be like, okay. But clearly yeah. they can't talk about it up front. Right. And that is it. I mean, you have my key. When I bought the Xbox, yeah. I got a PC and an Xbox key. It is worth playing. Uh, the boss battle at the end is just cheap and dumb, but the rest of the game is well worth a playthrough. And the, the way that the episodes change based upon the choices you make is, is well done. I, it was entertaining. Yeah, I have to get... I have to get around to playing it. Um, Along with Holy... It's through the Windows Store. Oh, okay. So that's always kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. Um, but Favorite? I did redeem the key, and it's, it's cool. sitting there. Cool. Um, that's why I actually have to log into my PC with uh, my uh, Xbox. Windows Store account. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Thanks, Microsoft. Yep. That's exactly what I wanted to do every time <laughs> I start my PC. I feel um, like they would. I, mean, I know they want to sell things to the Windows Store, but putting stuff on Steam, like their first-party games on Steam, would sell more copies, wouldn't it? Yes. Hmm. It is still very true that the the place to go for games is based on all the numbers is Steam by a long shot, like eighty percent of the digital market. Uh, GOG the has the guests is like ten. Wow. Okay. Ten or fifteen percent. Like it's Steam by a huge lead, and then GOG. Mm-hmm. And then you get Origin, Windows Store, like all the others. Just Humble fighting. Bumble. Yeah, fighting for the leftovers. But yeah, Steam. Valve had a vision, uh, and they capitalized on it. And it killed Half-Life 3. <laughs> Guess so. Sorry, guys. Um, so yeah. And the last piece of news you also found, you want to... Yeah, so... Shockingly, uh, I saw people on Twitter and saying, like, hey, I'm going to Germany this week. Oh, it's Gamescom this week. Already. Starting on the Ooh. 17th. Yeah. Um, I think it's the world's largest gaming convention. 345,000 attendees last year. So it's a big deal. Um, a lot of people don't seem to take it as a big deal, but it's a big deal. Um, it's a huge deal for Europe, especially. Yeah. Um, so it's a Cologne, Germany. Uh, so Microsoft and Sony are both showing games there, but they're not doing any kind of um, press conferences. They just they're there. It's the stuff that they were showing at E3, right? Uh, basically. But Blizzard is having a conference on Tuesday on the sixteenth. Um, EA. So it's nine thirty a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Mm-hmm. On, yeah, on Tuesday, and they're going to be talking about stuff. BlizzCon is in October, so I wouldn't expect any new game mm-hmm. announcements, but expect uh, announcements of content and updates for all the games currently out, and WoW has an expansion coming out the following week. So I think they'll be focused on that. Overwatch will probably get some nice uh, updates. There's rumors of a Bastion animated short showing his kind of origin its origin mm-hmm. but it's an it right it's an it <laughs> um hearthstone stuff probably maybe some diablo 3 stuff starcraft 2 stuff but maybe some hearthstone I see, yeah i could see them holding d3 and starcraft 2 stuff until blizzcon um because diablo 3 just had a patch if I remember right, this past week. Mm, okay. Like, Season 7 started on the PC and oh, I got right. a new patch. So, um, yeah, you have that. And then EA has one, which will be a lot about at FIFA. And probably a little bit on... I bet they'll do some stuff on Titanfall 2 and Battlefield 1. Stuff that's coming out this fall. So... Was there anything coming out of Gamescom? Like, the one? is there one thing that you're like, yes, I really want to see this? Something that's... Blizzard, I really... Oh, okay. It's just where you don't get to see Blizzard conferences that often. Right. So, usually, because they don't go to many 
uh, conventions. Yeah, they just do their own thing. They do their own thing. So the fact that they still go to Gamescom is pretty big. Right. Mostly because it's Europe, so they right. can entertain their European audiences as well. Um, and this is open to the public. Like, the first day or two isn't, but the weekend is. Right. And that's how they get just insane attendance, and people can just play all these games to the public. Um, it looks like Bungie is going to be doing stuff there. And that's the thing that I'm interested in, and I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but um, for some reason, new Destiny stuff always gets me excited, whether or not actually playing it gets me excited. I don't know. Um, but I usually like to play the new stuff, at least for a little bit. It keeps me um, entertained. So they're going to be doing a live stream on, tu- live stream on Tuesday, uh, 9.30 a.m., talk about new Crucible stuff, maps, features. Um, and That's the same time as the Blizzard we, conference right so not not the best timing perhaps but i mean who watch i i don't know i wouldn't really watch them live anyways I'll no it's just funny cap later but for it's people at yeah. the show right um yeah the only thing that i mean it sounds like what does this say a lot of the pvp stuff but they're going to focus also show some stuff of like a new social area oh like a new tower yeah fell winter peak oh but I mean, wasn't there another? There already is the other. Yeah, the, like the space reef. That the no reef. one ever, never does anything at. The reef people were in the reef for about um, two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll. We'll see. I'm curious to see if they've learned any lessons on how to get people to go to different areas. Mm-hmm. Um. But we've already also seen a lot of the rumors now of Destiny Two. Right. Um. Which. It's coming. Everyone knows it's happening. I'm just curious what it's actually. What de- what Destiny two? What two? What does a sequel actually mean for Destiny? Story. It, it better mean it's an, story. It's an MMO. Do you roll a new character? Or do you keep you? No, you ca- your, character? your character goes with you. They already confirmed that you take your character to the next game. And yeah, do they start at level? Are they re? Do you keep your level? Do you keep going up? Like, there's a lot of... There's a reason why there isn't a World of Warcraft 2. Right. Yeah, right. That's true. But I know you take your character. I don't know if you keep your leveling, but... I'm very curious at at what they... And once you're in 2, you never go back to 1? Probably not, because once... um, Oh... Once the big expansion came out last September it wiped out some of the vanilla destiny stuff. So if you only had vanilla destiny, you couldn't play certain yeah. things. They were just gone. And so it also makes me wonder if, uh, let's say I just get destiny two. And I say, I want to start a new character. Mm-hmm. What's what, what do I start? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, this is all big questions. Cause it's like, Oh, you're actually trying to make a sequel to it effectively an MMO. Right. What is that? What does that actually look like? And, I'm not entirely convinced there's going to be a two. I mean, I know that the the earnings call the guy said it's going to be we're all we switched over to Destiny two. But maybe it's just going to be like Destiny blah 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 blah. Yeah, I could. Yeah, like this, you know, Destiny Rise of Iron, Destiny, the Taken King was the last one. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I mean, that's going to be a big. I'm very curious on how they plan on bridging that gap. Yeah. Um. Would you on that, pick it I up? Want. Would you pick it up? I know you Destiny played two. Yeah, uh, played they quite have a to, bit of they, one, but they need to reconvince me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not gonna pick up Rise of Iron. Like I've just decided. I'm just like no, I don't play. I didn't. Uh, the last expansion didn't get me back in enough. Like right. I still just petered out. I'm like that's just not worth it. That's just, like I have fun to a point. But it doesn't. The story isn't good enough for me to be to care because <laughs> I like the story and I don't really do PvP. I did some, but I'm yeah. like, it's honestly, if I wanted to do a PvP shooter right now, I'd just do Overwatch. Yeah, which is well worth your time. Exactly. I'm like, I had much more fun playing Overwatch PvP than I did ever playing Destiny PvP. Mm-hmm. Um. So I mean, it's just kind of a hard thing. So the big sell for me is. Uh, story and strike raid like co-op content and none of the like just it really hit a point with me where I'm just like I just can't do this grind like 
I'm kind of bored doing the same thing. And you didn't play um, Taken King? I did play Taken King. Oh, okay. okay. And that was the one where I was giving it a chance. I was like, I was honestly got kind of excited for Taken King, uh, the loot changes and stuff. And it, right. it held my attention for two weeks, two and a half. Mm-hmm. Which is probably enough to get through that campaign. Yeah, I got through the campaign, and I played probably a week after finishing the campaign. Yep. And then I was just like, nah, I'm done. That's exactly what I did. I beat the campaign, played a bit longer. Uh, I jump in every once in a while and do some stri- I do some strikes now. I got back into the leveling, but yeah. not, not too. Every once in a while. It's kind of like a third-tier go-to game for me at this point. So. Yeah, and it's a really, like, combat and the shooting is really well done. It's just, it's just not quite there for me. And the story, like, my investment in the universe is pretty minimal. Right. Just because of the way the story is presented and things. I'm like, ah, I want to like the world you've created. I think you have created an interesting world. You're just not presenting it to me that well. Right. And then yeah. Taken King did better, but... It still has a ways to go. Yeah. Especially where I was so invested in, like, the, the world of Halo. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a company that can build worlds. I right. get that, and they do interesting things. It's just... The way they're presenting the world for Destiny is just isn't the, the most engaging. Well, hopefully we'll have some interesting news that will get some people um, excited yeah. again for that game. is coming out in September. It's, I guess, part of the reason why um, Destiny is kind of as a... Uh, I don't know. Uh, soft. I have a soft spot in my heart for Destiny because it was the reason why I bought a PS4. All the the marketing hype in 2014, yeah. I definitely bought into it, and I was I was on the edge of or on the fence about getting a PS4, anyways. And then I was like, "It's my birthday, got some money. All right, I'm gonna go for it." And I loved the shit out of that campaign until I beat it, and then it just lost everything. Like there was nothing. Yeah, more I mean, for me. It. It's close to a great game, but it's just enough off that you're just like, yep. And some people get really invested in. It. I know a lot of people, that, at least a number of people I know, that just like play hundreds of so hours, so much of that game. Me, and yeah, it's me fine. too. Like, yeah. it just it didn't grab me like that. It just I can't just keep doing the repetition of the, like hunting resources. Uh, I do own the original campaign. I did the loot cave forever. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I was shooting at the loot cave. There's like <laughs> six of it. There's always people out shooting at the loot cave. Yeah. I mean, I did a little bit of it, but it just, the pro- the speed of progression slowed down enough where I was just like, man, I have to do how much to get better? Right. Is it worth it? No. No, definitely no, not. No, I don't want to put that much time into this. Or like whenever you finish, like I play it at night and I'm like, did I get anything new? No. So I just, I just played for three hours and I got nothing? Okay whatever i think that the story could definitely bring me back in and i, I think we've you know yeah. obviously we've changed this to the destiny podcast but if for the raids if they don't have like random matchmaking uh, yeah. i really want that because i can't get a group of six people i know together to do it so let me just join up with the randos and try it out let, let me try it out and i haven't played a single raid because i can't yeah. get a, you know a group together to do it I would actually say they also would like them if they'd have more strikes. Like varied? Varied. Yeah. yeah varied strikes. and um, WoW had this issue for a while, and mm-hmm. they started fixing that as they put out expansions. They made a lot more uh, dungeons. A lot more. But they'd wing the dungeons, mm-hmm. so they make them shorter. But let's say you do... Uh, I think the one I always remember is Scarlet Monastery. Um and there was four wings to that place. And they were all 15 to 20 minutes. And so you could just go in and do this wing. And then sometimes you get groups that want to do all the wings. And sometimes you get groups that say, let's just go do this one. It's quick. You right. get out. Right. Um, but it gave you a lot of choice and content because they were all... S- use the same Scarlet Monastery tile set and uh, props and everything. They all had kind of unique stories and unique things to do in them. So it just took a big dungeon, cut it into four, made you get, let you choose what you wanted to do. But it expanded, gave you more options and more variety while you were playing. Um, and I always felt like they're just there wasn't that many strikes in Destiny. No, and and 
I come back every two or three months and play a couple of strikes, and every time I come back, it's the same damn strikes. Over oh, like yes. Omnigool or or I can't remember the other wizard's name, whatever. But yeah, it's like the same two or three over and over, which is great because I know how to do them, but it's also kind of boring. Yep. So I'm not I'm not interested in playing games to be bored. So yeah. Um. <sighs> so yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's all the news we have for this week. After the break, we're going to come back and talk about what we've been playing. So stay right there, and we will be right back. All right, my friends, welcome back from the break. We're here to talk about the things we have been playing this week, and I have a pretty big list I've um, got my consoles back up, my PC back up. Um, so... My list is huge. Huge. Yeah. Um, not, not really. We already talked about my game. Yeah. You're, well, your game is huge. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, just one game on that list. Uh, yeah. For me, uh, went to a friend's house. I wanted to go uh, do some local co-op. So I went over to his house, and we played Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. He's got one of those Superboy things. Have you seen this? Yeah. Super- yeah. yeah. It's so awesome. Um, so Superboy basically is a Super Nintendo. You can play a handheld or you can plug it into your TV. We plugged it into his TV and we just we plowed through the whole game in about 38 minutes. Nice. No, 30 minutes maybe. He, he just, he's played that game at least 100 times. Um, it's his favorite game of all time. So he knows where all the enemies are and like he cranked it up to like as hard as we could do it and he knows how to just he knows all the tricks. So he probably took care of like two thirds of the enemies and I took care of the other third. Um but we blew through that and then we played Overcooked. Um which is I don't know who it's by. Norton. I haven't even heard of this one. Oh my oh it's Ghost Town Games or something like that. Over I swear to God, you should look up some videos. I think that that would be a fun game for you and your wife to play and me and my wife to play. So Overcooked is has like the stupidest premise, but you're basically like a sous chef or a line cook or whatever, and you have orders come up on top of the screen, and you've got to put together these orders. So it could be like a salad or a hamburger. So if it's a hamburger, you've right. got to get the meat, pound the meat, fry the meat, get the bun, uh, lettuce, tomato, cut those things up, get them all ready. Um, and you work with a partner or you can work by yourself. It's better. It's, you know, don't play by yourself. This is a party game. I've seen this video. I know what game we're talking about. Oh my god! Looking so you, at it, scene. it just came out. Yeah, it just came out. So you put yourselves in. You're kind of divided on the screen, so you can't get to the chopping, or your partner can't get to the food. So you give him the food, he chops it up, sends it back to you, and you get everything together onto the plate, and then get it over to the um, uh, to send it out for people to eat on time. And you get like a bonus or a tip or whatever. And then the plates come back; they're dirty. And it's just like it's madness. <laughs> like the, the beginning is just it's simple teaching the mechanics and then you know there's only two buttons it's uh, grab and like use basically um and then a, a speed button i guess just to run around um and eventually you're kind of mixing up the orders and like the, this hamburger doesn't have pickle or uh, lettuce but this one does and it's so, it was so much fun we played we, we just he turned it on we're like let's try this one out and we played for three hours like awesome. just straight it was just fun we were laughing crying it was so funny and it was just simple it looks good it plays good the mechanics are great it's it doesn't try to do more than what it is it's smart um it is a super fun party game and i think that you and your wife would enjoy that wait till it's uh on sale of course but yeah yeah um i'll yeah. wish list this one. Oh, it's so good um it's, i think it's like 16.99 on steam yeah. right now or ps4 um it was just on sale on ps4 i'm sure it will be again toward the end of the year that's when i'll pick it up but honestly it's i mean if you're looking for a fun party game it's kind of worth it at its price right now but um we just oh, it was so much fun um so those are two games i played with him um and then my cousin came this week and haven't seen him in a, quite a while and when we were kids we played two games it was either counter-strike or diablo 2 <laughs> uh so we played some counter-strike this week and got my internet set up on my pc finally and we played some cs go and we went back and played some original counter-strike and he used to play in a league he used to play in the cow league so he was really good and i was not great um so what we used to do was uh each play around he'd play around then i'd play around and we see who could get a better score and in the past he would just beat my ass and now we're about even because he hasn't played in a while and i've been playing a little bit um so that was kind of nice <laughs> but it was kind of fun just to relive our old gaming days and just said we played uh once we 
kind of went through that a little bit. I set him up with Overwatch, and he played Overwatch for about an hour. He really liked it. I could see that. Yeah. How was how was going back and playing original Counter Strike? Um. Okay, so it's a little. It's fine. It kind of, it's just like putting on an old glove. Um, but you kind of realize how unbalanced the old maps were. Like, remember Dust? You used to play yeah. Dust all the time. That thing is so unbalanced. Like, it's just, I don't know, there, too many choke points. or it, It's not conducive to good. Um, there's, like, the long hallway battle. Yeah. Um, but there's not a lot of places that kind of funnel people out where they have to make decisions. It's just, you can just camp a lot. Um, and you're trying to, like, fire blindly around a corner, basically. Um, Dust 2 improves on, like, map design way more. And yeah. I, I didn't realize how much better. Um, but it was fun. It just, the second thing is just, it just took me back to college. Like, I played that game <laughs> in college so yeah. much. And it was just, like, I just, I went back 10 years, 15 years. Um, it was really a lot of fun. And to play with him was really cool. Um, and then uh, another game I played was... Uh, so Sony has had the play 2016 campaign and they've had four games coming out last week was the third game. And it was brutal, which is based, I guess on an old assy, um, game. Uh, kind of. Okay. They're, right. they're alluding to net hack. Ah, uh, uh, that's it. Right. But it's not, it's based on net hack and the fact that they're making fun of the ASCII or using the ASCII right. aesthetic, but, right. uh, NetHack is not an action game. NetHack is a turn-based. With uh, text, right? So yeah, it's all text on screen. Yeah. You play it in a terminal window on right. a PC. Like, well, I still play that game. Really? <laughs> oh, God, NetHack is the most amazing game. Awesome. Um, I do not recommend anyone play it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, considering it uses every key on your keyboard. Oh, my God. Uh, the amount of time it took me to learn this game... Um, it was one of my first things when I went to PopCap. I had a, it was it was a job requirement. To <laughs> I had to learn play. this game. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. Um, Why? Because uh, that was when I was in IT. It was just mm. a funny thing in IT going like, but it's also an incredibly strong game design. Right. Like, when you, I mean, it's been around for thirty years now, constantly in development. I think they might be done finally. But there's a there's a it's all open source and there's a group that manages it basically um but it's like where uh, uh, the thing that always comes to my head is the one of my uh, old bosses the way one of his characters died was he fell down some stairs and he had uh fell down discovered some hidden stairs when he walked over them fell down them and fell onto a cockatrice which turned into stone <laughs> awesome this is the type of random stuff that happens in the game. And was like, it permadeath? Like you're dead? Oh, yeah. So, you're trying yeah. to start, start a character over. Exactly. And this is stuff that you could put 50, 60 hours into a character to beat the game. And then it just, just dies. Yep. Oh, and the shortest game I ever had, I took a step and a rock fell on my head and I died. <laughs> like, I didn't have a helmet on. I took 18 points of damage and just killed me. It's like, all right, start another character. Well, so um, so there's some throwbacks to the net hack. There's the ASCII, um, yeah. ASCII um, motif. Art. Yeah, yeah. And then if you hit the touchpad, uh, it shows you the map all in ASCII. Okay. Uh, it turns into like a 2D thing. It's really kind of cool. Um, but then it also has the permadeath. So I'm playing. I know it's permadeath, and I'm kind of being careful going through the first dungeon. And then I open up this new door, and it's all black, right? With like the the background's yeah. black, and then your your route is black, but it's framed by ASCII characters or whatever. Yep. Um, I didn't know that what some of the the characters um, were showing me was a gap uh, in the road. I, it was black, so I thought it was part of the road. So I just walked forward and just fell into a pit and died. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, okay, that was about twenty minutes of work done. Um, but I'm about an hour into it, um, playing an Amazon character, and yeah, I mean it's a dungeon hack, you know, hack and slash kind of game. Yeah, it's more ac- it's action combat, it's, right? Exactly, right, and it's. It's fun. I mean, that's all I can say about it. It's fun. Is it co-op? Uh, shit, Do I don't know. Co-op? I don't know, actually, because I usually play games by myself. So I have no idea. It'd be fun if it was. Um, yeah. I know that you can make dungeons for people to play or for yourself to play. <laughs> um, but I don't know if you can play co-op. Huh. Let's look at that. Um, yeah. it, it is the one that is, has interested me from... Uh, 
from the Sony one. Yeah, it's just fun. because of my love of NetHack. And... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the last one is going to be Bound. That's uh, Tuesday. Yeah. I also have that one pre-ordered, uh, so I ended up pre-ordering those two. Um. So yeah, the the graphics are good. It's just the only thing, the only complaint I really have is that there's so much black. Um, yeah. It kind of gets hard to look at after a while because it's just static black. Um, but it's yeah, simple dungeon design so far. Um, I haven't seen anything that's been too confusing except for that pit that I fell into. It looks like it has local co-op. Oh okay, so couch co-op. That sounds good. Yeah. Um, speaking of couch co-op, the last game I'm playing is Tricky Towers, uh, which is it was the free one of the free games this yeah. month. Uh, have you tried it yet? I have not. Oh man, so it's like Tetris but weird. So <laughs> there's like three different game modes. Uh, one is race, where you're trying to build up your tower to hit this like finish line and then stay standing for three seconds so that you it registers as winning. But as you're building this Tetris style block um, tower, um, the it's not stable. The foundation is not stable. Yeah. So like you'll lose blocks and things will fall apart. Uh, the second one is called puzzle where there's a laser about like six or eight blocks, block lengths ahead of your um, foundation. And you have to put as many blocks as you can underneath the laser. So keep building up, but stay below the laser. And then you basically have to beat your opponent. Um, and the last one survival where you're given like 50 blocks and you have to put all the blocks down uh, without losing them. Um, or, and you see who lasts the longest, you or your co-op partner. Um, so my wife, I, she wanted to play, or I said, ask her if she wanted to play a game with me. And she said, sure. Um, so I wanted to try this game with her cause she loves Tetris and she just, <laughs> it was great. We played and she's like, I want to play again. Okay. We played and I won again. She's like, I want to play again. Okay. We kept doing it. And every single time I want to play again, I want to play again. We played like between the three modes, probably like 20, 20 yes. rounds, which is not normal for my wife. <laughs> Is that today? That was tonight. Yeah, it was tonight. about yeah for about now. You know. Now the thing is, will she want to play tomorrow? That that's good. That's a good question. We'll see. Um, you know, she does ask. Um, that's part of the reason why I need the Wii U back. Um, we've been, you know, got everything set up. You know, we're playing a couple of games. She's like, I want to play Mario Kart. <laughs> okay, well, Mario Kart's in Seattle. Okay, well, I want to play Mario Kart. Kart, okay. get it back. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so that that was cool. So those are the games that I've been playing. Um, all really fun of, of that whole list. I mean, definitely it was fun to play, um, but fun to play with my wife. We had a lot of laughs and definitely fun to go back and, you know, visit some nostalgia with my cousin, but overcooked was the most fun I had this week playing a game. It was good to know just pure fun. You know, sometimes you're looking for games for story, sometimes for the mechanics, whatever. This was just chaotic fun. I'll look into it. Yeah. Uh, that, that's mine. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, and I've only been playing one game. And we talked a lot about it at the beginning. beginning. Yep. Anything to add to No Man's Sky, what you are hoping to discover on this planet when you finish today? Uh, I haven't fully uh, categorized all the life forms on a planet yet, and there's an achievement for that. And I want to get that trophy. Nice. I I will say, as a trophy whore, (laughs) Mm -hmm. this game is probably pretty easy to get trophies. (laughs) Maybe I do. I've already it. got like th- three golds. Damn. Okay. And the, like, it's not. There's one category that's going to be hard to get gold in, which is the uh, you need to uh, fully explore sixty worlds. Oh. Damn. If fully explore is uh, you basically just need to categorize uh, all the flora and fauna. So. That sounds like a tall order for sixty. Yeah, it seems big because I haven't done a single one so far, but I haven't focused on it. <laughs> right. But yeah. I think that's the only time, like the one that's going to take the most time. The other ones have just happened as I've just been playing. I've walked a certain far, certain distance. I've earned enough credits. I've right. shot down enough enemy ships. Like it's all just stuff that's happened because I've just been playing. Right. Um. So I don't know. I I'm I'm earning trophies in this game. <laughs> Those are my favorite kind of trophies, where you're playing a game that you like, and they kind of pop up naturally. And you you, at least for me, I realize, oh, I'm only like five away from a platinum, or you know, yeah, something like that. So it's fun to go back and adds a little bit of replay value. Um, thank God there's not a trophy for visiting all 18 quintillion planets because that no, will never happen. No, no. 
<laughs> That's all tied to these milestones. Right. Uh, I also got the one for a language. I've learned 150 alien words. Dang. All in one language or in a spread across uh, the different Spread ones? across all of them. Oh, okay. Cool. I mean, that that is also one of those weird things where you're just collecting words. And I'm slowly but surely finally understanding at least a little bit what aliens are saying to me and when they're making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> so the NPCs have some personality. Yeah, the different races have personality. Like oh, okay. they're more archetypical, kind of like you have a warrior race, you have more of a trader race, and then you have like I think they're androidish, mm. mechanical type race who mm-hmm. are complete and total pompous dicks. <laughs> and that's what you're starting to learn now as oh, I'm translating awesome. their language. I'm like, oh god, you guys are so stuck up. They're Man. like. They want me to. They're showing me a picture of a slug, the bird-like race, and them. I think they're wanting me to sh- tell me where I think I fall on this rank. <laughs> what they want me to, and I chose like like them, and I my standing went down. I'm pretty sure they wanted me to choose slug. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. It's still yeah. There's though. That's kind of where the personality comes in with As the game. A- as a linguist, that part of the game sounds awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's it's random and kind of funny, but yeah. I just have a smattering of words, so you're just like, what are they telling me? Right. Okay. That's awesome. Um, so that's the games that we're playing this week. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk a little bit about Renaissance Fairs, because Anthony just came back from one, so stay right there. We'll be right back. All right, my friends, welcome back to Prof and Dev go to Renaissance Fairs. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, you just went to one up there in Seattle. What I know. Else? First one I've ever been to. Damn. With my entire family. Like your mom and stuff too? Uh, no. Oh, my, okay. Not my extended family. Your nuclear uh, family? Just my nuclear family. Yeah. Um, just as something to do. One, it's incredibly popular. Holy shit. How many people were there? A couple thousand, maybe more. Like... My God, the parking was a pain in the butt, just the amount of time it took to get from, like, off the highway to there. We're like, no way can this line because of the Renaissance Fair. It's the (laughs) Renaissance Fair. No way. And then we're like, it's totally, it's like a half an hour for us to get to parking. Damn. Like, just from, like, two miles or something. Because it, and it was packed. It was packed the entire day. There were so many people just, and they're all dressed up. Was anyone there breaking immersion by trying to find Pokemon? No. Not that nice. I saw. Nice. Uh, it's in a place where you wouldn't be able to find any anyway, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Like, it's rural enough that you're, there's nothing around. It's just at, like, a farm, a uh, big open field uh, south of Seattle, south and east of Seattle. Um, so, yeah, it, and this weekend was a, uh, it goes for three weekends, so this is the second weekend, and there's one next weekend. And this weekend was fairies. And like mytho- mythological, my- like fantasy. Uh-huh. So people were dressed up as everyone had fairy wings. Oh my God, the amount of fairy wings that people had wandering around in there was right. insane. But people were dressed up as witches and uh, orcs and demons and just fantasy creatures. Awesome. Um, last weekend was pirates, and next weekend is the Queen's Masquerade Ball. Mm. So it's all oh, like fancy dress, fancy dress, Venetian masquerade type yeah. stuff. That's um, awesome. Which also sounds pretty interesting to me. That would be Are you going just back? fun to see. No. Uh, <laughs> it is kind of expensive. Uh, oh, really? It's like, oh, okay. This is not cheap. Yeah. Um, but man, I definitely see like people, there's clearly a group of people, you can tell they're just like, this is what they do every year. They come here. This is their thing. Probably for all three weekends. Well, and they probably travel to different rent fairs too. Yeah. Like there's, um, there's a big one in my old town, the one I just moved away from. Um, thousands of people park in, in this city. Um, and they travel. They tra- They follow rent fairs or I don't know. It's like yeah, a fish concert. There's, there's definitely the, one of the shows we watched the kids really, really enjoyed. It was a Cirque de Sewer. Oh uh, and it was actually, it's like a, it's a lot of really bad puns, 
Um, but it's a acrobatics kind of show, theatrical show with a uh, rats, trained rats, and a trained cat. And so it was silly. It was really silly, and but it was. In the end, it was really funny. Like, laughed a lot, and the kids loved it. They were just yeah. busting up laughing the entire time. So, so were you up close so you could see it? Get a good yeah. view? Or... Oh, okay. Yeah. It, um, but I do know that person, because after I was like, what is this person? Like, And it's actually a thing. They just go to a lot of Renaissance fairs, and plus doing other events. Like, they're from New York, actually. Right. And I'm just like, you come all the way out here from New York and do this for three weeks? Okay. Okay. Um, did you and your family dress up? Uh, we did not this year, mm. but we might next year. Yeah, we kind of just wanted it because my wife hadn't been to. She might have been to a Renaissance Ren fair before, but I hadn't. But we wanted kind of just wanted to see what this one was going to be. Yeah, I um, want to get too dressed up in case it wasn't that kind of Ren fair. <laughs> yeah, and just figure out what kind of like we had no clue. Mm-hmm. Um, but my we'll probably if we go back next year would we'll dress up um, at least a little bit. Uh, what we saw, we saw Joust, big uh, the tournament of. So they did fake cra- uh, stage sword fighting and, mm-hmm. and different jousting and horse riding games. And I, I was in the uh, the British camp against yeah. who is Britain going against? Brit- uh, it was four. There was four nations. There was Britain, Spain, Germany, and France. Oh, okay. Different. So those four all had their champions and their teams and they were doing different things. England did end up winning. So that was fun to watch. Uh, and I mean, it was full on. It, it was fake jousting and the fact that they're not trying to like hit each other off the horses. It's not like Gregor Clegane kind of jousting. No, but they were actually charging at each other and yeah, like trying to hit each other's shields so that they could get points and right. running around, like trying to throw javelins from horseback and cut off cut cabbages on stands while riding mm-hmm. reminded me of witcher in that regard nice uh, yeah and to salt yeah, yeah it actually did a lot it was a lot like i mean they did a good job in witcher 3 and at least trying to do the the tourney type stuff so yeah it was fun witcher 3 the ren fair <laughs> that's kind of what Toussaint tourney is yeah it really yeah right um, a little bit more violent, but uh, same basic principles of here, do some fake sword fighting, right. ride a horse, show us that you can do things while riding a horse. Um, yeah, my I, son ate a turkey leg. Uh, did he eat the whole thing? Did he eat it? No, he didn't oh, eat the whole thing. He ate God. some of it, though. Yeah, that's got to be hard for a little kid to get his mouth around. Yeah, he like. He loves drumsticks, so he's like, yes, turkey leg, I'm going to eat this thing. It's a giant drumstick. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, my God. My favorite thing about Ren Fairs is the archery. I love to go and, like, practice archery. I'm really bad at it, but it's kind of a fun place to go try to do that because I don't really get to do that anywhere else. Yeah. They did have a booth there for that. We watched some of it. They also had a axe throwing. Oh, damn. That'd be where fun. Where you could go out and just, like, they have the throwing axes, and you can throw them into a... Uh, Target stumps with targets on them. Um, we sat and watched that for a while. They have a water balloon trebuchet. <laughs> That's uh, that is a really cool band name. Water, water balloon, balloon trebuchet. trebuchet. <laughs> Remember that one. Can oh use that. Yep. I'll name a planet water balloon trebuchet. Oh, please do. Oh my god, please do that. <laughs> water um, balloon trebuchet. trebuchet. Uh, they have foam sword battle stuff, mm. so kids could. Uh, which we actually found out was the the guy there doing it. Uh, my son did a foam sword battle thing here on the, the island that we live on. Just the, the town puts it on once every summer. It's free. Kids can just come out. and It's the same guy. And oh, really? Yeah, you can just do a big foam sword battle. Nice. But you can, he's also, you can, he does parties. Like, like goes to your house and... Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks for two hours. That's cool. Um, up to 20 kids or something. Does it have to be kids? Could it be no, it does not have, to, <laughs> not have to be. <laughs> awesome. And funny, the guy who does it is also the game store I went to in college. Mm. So you knew this guy. Chicago, uh, not really knew him, but it was just like, it was shared the same booth as a store called the Game Matrix. It's a pen and paper role-playing store that has been around in Tacoma for, man, at least 20 years now, probably. And it's still going, and they do foam sword battles now. Nice. 
So it was just random. I was like, what? Okay. Why wouldn't I know, you? I know the store. I've bought things from the store. Yeah. Um, so that was just a weird random connection of things. They didn't see anyone I knew. I was kind of surprised about that. Yeah. I expect with all my nerdy connections up here that I would have run into someone else at the ring fair. But not. They weren't um, disguised. You didn't recognize them. because That's true. They could, have. they could have. They could have. There was someone who was dressed in, like, a full raven costume. Damn. Like, creepy, like, straight up, like, feathered raven head. Mm-hmm. It was... Unsettling, it seems like. Yeah, very unsettling. <laughs> um, I don't know. It was a fun time. Uh, clearly, you've gone to them before. Yeah. I really enjoy, like, the medieval setting in general. So whenever there's a red fair nearby, I like to drag my wife and go. Or sometimes when she doesn't go, I go by myself. Um, and I always end up eating a turkey leg because that just seems to be standard fare. And yep. looking longingly at um, um, chain mail and thinking, <laughs> this would be fun to own and thinking, why? I wouldn't know. You, you own it for a rent fare. Well, yeah, that's true. That's I pretty much for, the, that's or, the, I, I can only figure that's the main point yeah. of having it is that you pull it out once a year right. for the rent fare. That makes sense. Yep. That. Although it's probably so hot. So God. hot and so heavy. and. Yeah. I know you wear like padding and stuff underneath it, but that'd make it even hotter. So hot. Um, but yeah, archery, I did a couple, I, you know, every year I'd do the archery and I eventually got a bow, um, which nice. I, I then never, ever, ever used. <laughs> so I got rid of that eventually. Um, so my dreams of archery died, but I don't know. I just like, you know, fantasy stories are my favorite fantasy movies. I just love fantasy. So the Ren Fair is just people who love fantasy and pretending, and it's just great. I never, ever dress up, by the way, but... It never know. felt judgmental there. No, yeah. That's I, the one thing. It was all very, like, dress up or not. There right. was no judgment being passed on anyone there. Like, everyone was just there having fun. Right. Um, that's where my wife was saying, especially with the, the costume type stuff, where she's like... Especially at like bigger conventions now, like Comic Con or PAX or stuff, people kind of look down on you if you have a crap costume. Yeah, right. Not the Ren Fair. People don't care. That's like good. everyone clearly was there, just have a good time, celebrate, enjoy it, drink right. beer. Just celebrate something we all like. Yeah, exactly. Um, Last time I went, I actually did a tarot reading. Um, I had to read my future, and it was. It was some. It was very generic. I can't remember what she said, but it was like, if you work hard, you'll yeah. achieve your goals. Like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Terror, I mean, that's tarot readings in general. Yeah, it's a lot about. I had one in college. Someone did, and I was like, that was really generic. But I can see how I can apply everything you said to something in my mind. Right, that's the trick. Like, which wow, is fine. You which know? is fine. I actually, seem to think that's probably good sometimes for people, so they can help them think through things right um but yeah i mean that's that's the how those those work all the tarot cards look so cool they do i really like the way they look um but i would yeah i mean it's just for fun. it's entertainment it's for fun yeah they had some of that there they had henna of course and yeah. they had people selling all sorts of leather goods and swords and the, I saw a Keyblade, the Kingdom Hearts Keyblade. Oh, wow. <laughs> they also had a miniature Buster Sword. Nice. They had a bunch of WoW weapons. One of the shop had, like, one of the shop just had a bunch of just, like... Pop uh, culture weapons? Pop culture weapons. Okay. Was there any uh, Game of Thrones stuff? I didn't see any, actually. Robert's Warhammer or Ice Needle? I didn't, see, uh, I didn't see any of those. Mm. Although I wonder how distinct they are. Yeah, well, I mean, Ice is just a so huge the, one, but Longclaw yeah, has that, the the wolf. Yeah, I did see any wolves. That's for sure. Yeah, I did see one place that sold a little bit of Game of Thrones stuff that was like officially licensed uh, a wax seal. Oh, awesome! Like, uh, I don't know what house it was. I didn't wasn't able to get up close to look. They were selling that, and they were selling a uh, uh, house pins. They had a Lannister and a mm-hmm. uh, a Stark. Mm-hmm. Like a uh, coat of arms kind right. of pin. So, but it, I'm kind of surprised there wasn't more when I think about it. It was more generic stuff, not generic. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That makes more sense. It's less jarring. I mean, Game of Thrones is cool and all, but you're there to celebrate like the medieval time, not so much like the, the 
IP of Game yeah. of Thrones or whatever else. Yeah, I mean, the closest, most IP stuff that I really saw was mostly, like, strangely, some Disney stuff. Like the Keyblade? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, that was at that one shop, but, uh, like, someone was dressed up as a uh, Maleficent. Oh, okay. Was anyone dressed that, up like Mickey from um, Fantasia? No. <laughs> there was a, I, I saw a bunch of links. There was, like, four or five links. Oh, cool. Which I wasn't shocked. No, no Zeldas. Just oh, Link. sad. We figured next year if we take kids, we should dress my son up as Link and my daughter up as Zelda. Yeah, that'd be cool. But then we have to figure out what uh, my wife and I need to dress up as. Ganon and Ganondorf. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be scary. Don't do that. What? The Triforce. Uh, uh, she, oh, I see. I could be... I mean, it could be the the king. Hy- king of Hyrule and yeah. she could be like the fairy the 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 big fairy the mother fairy whatever that is zora just with zora zora yeah tetra. she was asking she was asking like is there any, tetra would be good yeah if there was any uh like other main characters that run through all the zelda games and it made me start thinking that and i was like i don't really think there's a ton yeah that run through the whole the whole line. I mean, there's Link, there's Zelda. Ganon. Ganon. Uh, I, think that, I think that's pretty much it. That hits every game. Yeah. yeah. Tingle? Tingle? No, probably not. No, Tingle <laughs> didn't show up until Wind Waker. Yeah. And it, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, cool. Well, we have I'm to figure you... that out. Maybe we'll do it next year. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you had fun at the Ren Fair. It sounds I like did. A, lot, a good time, good weekend, especially with the kids. That's awesome. Yeah. The kids had a blast. They were having a good time. I want to have a kid just so I can take the kid to a rent fair. <laughs> That's not a good reason to have a kid. <laughs> it's better than a lot of people have. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reason. A lot yeah. of people don't even have a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I just forgot my condom. Oh. Oh, I have a kid now. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Shout out to my brother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, speaking of shout outs, happy birthday, Carl. Yes. Turning turning the old fifty six. <laughs> fifty six, huh? Yeah. <laughs> now I'd feel really old. Thirty six. Yeah. Ugh. It's true. I don't know if he'll listen to this all the way to the end or if he does listen, but uh yeah. If so, happy birthday. Happy birthday, status quo. There you go. All right, my friend, thanks so much for your time tonight. We will be back next week in some form or another, but until next week, uh, keep playing No Man's Sky. I'll keep uh, getting ready to teach for the first time in eight months. (laughs) Have fun with that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love my job, so whatever. All right, my friends. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. All right. Good night. Good night, folks.